Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl, T. So I want to come on here and talk about the whole Roseanne Barr situation. So if you guys do not know, Roseanne Barr has once again, for the millionth time, put her foot in her mouth, but this time she's suffering severe consequences for her actions. So what happened is that basically Roseanne has been trending for the past 24 hours on social media. And the reason why she's trending is because she took to Twitter yesterday and basically said that the former White House advisor, her name is Valerie Jarrett. She said that Valerie Jarrett was a cross between the Muslim Brotherhood and the Planet of the Apes if they had a baby. So when she said that, that tweet went viral. Folks started going off on her. She deleted the tweet. Delete all that shit! Delete all that shit! And then she tried to call herself apologizing, but not before ABC basically got rid of the Roseanne show. She lost her sponsorship. She lost so much behind this. It is insane. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this news clip. Go ahead and check this out. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Good and Planet of the Apes had a baby equals VJ. That is the tweet that sank a TV empire. <laughs> Roseanne's racist slam of former Obama aide Valerie Jarrett came in the wee hours and Twitter erupted. Roseanne quickly took it down and tweeted, I apologize to Valerie Jarrett and to all Americans. I am truly sorry for making a bad joke about her politics and her looks. But the damage was done. Co-star Sarah Gilbert said the comments were abhorrent and do not reflect the beliefs of our cast and crew. This is incredibly sad and difficult. Producer and comedian Wanda Sykes, I will not be returning to at Roseanne on ABC. Other Obama staffers and some viewers called for a boycott and ABC called it quits, saying the tweet was abhorrent, repugnant and inconsistent with our values. You can't just stand on the front porch staring at your Muslim neighbors. Since its return earlier this year, Roseanne's hit show has engaged explosive topics, immigration, terrorism, religious and racial intolerance, with her character romping as a rabid conservative and supporter of President Trump. He loved it. Look at Roseanne. I called her yesterday. Look at her ratings. Look at her ratings. Over 18 million people, and it was about us. But Roseanne's support for the far right went beyond the studio, with attacks on gun control advocates, a particularly nasty comment about former U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice, and a stab at former President Clinton's daughter, calling her Chelsea Soros Clinton, suggesting she is married to the son of noted liberal billionaire George Soros. When Chelsea Clinton corrected her while still complimenting Soros, Roseanne apologized, but then repeated a false claim that Soros was a Nazi. Were you aware of that? But we all make mistakes, right, Chelsea? Roseanne Barr's tweets are frequently controversial, but this time really became a wildfire because of just how racist and bizarre the comments were. So the network pulled the plug. The chief executive of Disney, which owns ABC, tweeting, there was only one thing to do here, and that was the right thing. All right, so you guys just saw that news clip. So this morning, Roseanne decided to basically, you know, talk about what she was going through and why she posted that tweet. And long story short, she basically blamed Ambien. And when I tell you the Ambien makers, they were not here for the foolishness. They checked the hell out of Roseanne Barr put her on blast. I fell out when I saw their tweet. I want you guys to go ahead and check out these tweets of Roseanne basically trying to make excuses for her tweet. And then the Ambien people clapping right back at Roseanne. Check this out. So Roseanne Barr says, guys, I did something unforgivable. So do not defend me. It was two in the morning and I was Ambien tweeting. It was Memorial Day two and I went too far and I do not want it defended. It was egregious, indefensible. I made a mistake. I wish I hadn't but don't defend it, please. Thank you. Then she says, hey guys, don't defend me. It's sweet of you to try, but losing my show is zero compared to being labeled a racist over one tweet that I regret even more. Then she says, Viacom pulled all the old Roseanne shows too. So meanwhile, while she's telling folks to not tweet her and not defend her, after she got her new show canceled and after she lost her old show, she then started incessantly retweeting her defenders at the same time asking them to stop. So she's full of shit, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what Ambium had to say about the situation. People of all races, religions, and nationalities work at Sanofi every day to improve the lives of people around the world. 
while all pharmaceutical treatments have side effects, racism is not a known side effect of any Sanofi medication. Well, I guess Ambium told her ass, okay? So now if that's not crazy enough, everybody's favorite commander-in-chief decided to take to Twitter and basically express his concern because as we all know, he loves him some Roseanne, honey. Even look at Roseanne. I called her yesterday. Look at her ratings. Look at her ratings. They are bosom buddies. So instead of Donald Trump basically condemning what she stated, he made it a whole woe is me situation about himself, okay? Go ahead and check out this video concerning what Donald Trump tweeted earlier today. Go ahead and check this out. Now breaking his silence on the cancellation of Roseanne Barr's show after she went on an amb what she says is an ambient infused racist tweet storm. Trump tweeting just moments ago this. Bob Iger of ABC called Valerie Jarrett to let her know that, quote, ABC does not tolerate comments like those made by Roseanne Barr. Gee, says the president, he never called President J Donald J. Trump to apologize for the horrible statements made and said about me on ABC. Maybe I just didn't get the call. So uh, we shouldn't be terribly surprised. Uh, you know, I would have predicted that Donald Trump would go after the so-called fake news media uh, in a tweet, but he went in a what is a sort of traditional direction for him, which is to make it about himself. Now, all right, so you guys just saw what Trump had to say about the situation. So me personally, the reason why I waited to put out this video is because I wanted to know what Valerie Jarrett had to say about everything. And as of 30 minutes ago, Valerie Jarrett finally did a press release. She finally talked about it. And for those of you guys who don't know who she is, her family is one of the most respected black families in the country. So Jarrett's great grandfather, his name was Robert Robinson Taylor. And he was believed to be one of the first African-American graduates of MIT. And then his son, his name is Robert Raycon Taylor, and he was a housing activist who became the first African-American chairman in the Chicago Housing Authority. Valerie Jarrett's mother, her name was Barbara Taylor Bowman, and she's an early childhood education expert from Chicago. And there's also a street in Chicago named after her. So last but not least, Valerie Jarrett's father, his name was Dr. James Bowman Jr., and he was a groundbreaking pathologist and a geneticist. So as you see, her family is nothing to sneeze at. Her family is well-respected in the country. They've done a lot for not only African-Americans, but for people in general. So a lot of people did not take kindly to Roseanne's so-called joke at all. So this is what Valerie Jarrett had to say about the situation. Go ahead and check this out. She did respond first the, for, for the first time publicly this afternoon to all of this that has happened. Listen to what she said. Well, first of all, I think we have to turn it into a teaching moment. I'm fine. I'm worried about all the people out there who don't have a circle of friends and followers who come right to their defense. The person who's walking down the street minding their own business and they see somebody cling to their purse or walk across the street. Those ordinary um, examples of racism that happen every single day. All right, so you guys just heard what Valerie Jarrett had to say, and I thought her response was very, very classy. You know, like she said, don't apologize to me. I'm going to be okay. There's thousands of people, millions of people who have my back, but I feel bad for those people who deal with racism every day and they have no support from anybody else. So I definitely love what she had to say. I don't feel bad for Roseanne. This entire situation is really disturbing. You know, I used to really like Roseanne, but then I noticed a lot of shady shit about her, and I'm going to get kind of deep and kind of esoterical really quick, okay? Now, I remember a few years back, Roseanne was being toted as a conspiracy theorist. You know, she was almost being seen as a hero to a lot of people's eyes because she was always talking about MK Ultra and how the Illuminati controls the industry. Like, she was almost seen as a whistleblower, okay? Well, uh, I think that, you know, this is a culture of fear, and um, nobody's more afraid than people in Hollywood. They're afraid that they'll drop out of the top, you know, they're afraid that they'll drop from the bottom of the pyramid, maybe to the middle of the pyramid. But, you know, they, they, they're the ones, uh, Hollywood is the, is the one that keeps all this power structure and all this culture of racism and sexism and, uh, and classism and genderism and all of it in place. They continually feed it and they make a lot of money doing it. I'm lucky that I can do it and I feel that I do it on behalf of uh, many people. You know, occasionally I go to Oscar parties and things like that and people, big stars, people will grab me by the arm and take me aside and say, I just want to thank you for the <laughs> things you say 
and it blows my mind, but that, that's the culture. It's a culture of fear for sure. Like every time you would see Roseanne, your damn tin hat would start tingling because it seemed like she was going to be spitting some truth, okay? So she talked about all this MK Ultra stuff, all this sexual abuse, all this crazy stuff that goes on in the industry. And then what I found funny is that a few years after that, then she was like this huge Trump supporter and everything was based towards Trump and her being a Trump supporter. And even still with that, I was fine with that because she has a right to support whoever she wants to support. That's her business. But what especially bothered me with Roseanne Barr is when she went back on television. When I heard that they were bringing back the Roseanne Barr show, that never sat well with me. And I even talked about it in the comments section about a week or so ago when we were talking about remakes and reboots. And I was even saying in that comment section that, you know, the Roseanne Barr show did not need to be brought back along with Martin and Fresh Prince and all these other reboots. And my issue with Roseanne is that for so long after you were cold and nobody in the industry was checking for you, you were this whole Illuminati conspiracy theorist. You were supposedly for the people. You were a whistleblower. And then as soon as ABC wrote out the red carpet and they're willing to give you your show back, all of a sudden there was no more conspiracies. All of a sudden there was no more whistleblowing. All of a sudden there was no more MK Ultra. All of a sudden, you know, the Illuminati didn't exist. Why? Because Roseanne was back on the air. And this is why I don't take a lot of these so-called celebrity whistleblowers seriously, because a lot of them become conspiracy theorists and whistleblowers after they're not hot anymore, okay? Once the industry has used them and spit them out, then all of a sudden they want to come out with their tell-all books. All of a sudden they want to, you know, put everything out there on blast. They want to start hashtags and movements and everything else. But when they were on fire, you didn't hear shit from them. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was very fake of Roseanne to be this staunch conspiracy truther and then turn around and go back to the same devils and the same MK Ultra mind control slave camp as she was calling at one point in time. It's funny that she left the whole truther situation and ran back to television so that never sat well with me now I did watch the first episode of the new Roseanne Barr show but I just couldn't get into it you know what I'm saying I don't really like remakes I'd rather watch the original that's what I grew up on I wasn't feeling this 2018 Roseanne Barr show so I only watched one episode and I tuned out you know but like I said a lot of things with her has just not sat well with me she's just come off as hypocritical and very very problematic so I don't feel bad for her in this instance this was not a joke I don't understand why she would even and joke like that why she would even go on to Twitter and say something like that you know starting to look to me and this is me just you know my tin hat tingling it's looking like a humiliation ritual to me like I feel like they brought her back because they knew eventually Roseanne she's a loose cannon okay she's always tweeting bullshit she's always talking out the side of her neck and I feel like they brought her back because they knew eventually she would say some shit you know what I'm saying she would test the water she would say some shit and then basically now they're snapping everything from her her old show her new show they're making Making an example out of her and maybe they're also you know setting an example for other people that if you leave the industry and you start running your mouth and talking about what happens behind closed doors we can get you one way or another because how, how swift this was how quick Disney snatched her show, how quick they removed her old show off of Netflix and every other platform. It's almost like the whole Roseanne persona, her TV shows and everything else just no longer exists. They basically made an example out of her in the drop of a dime, you know what I'm saying? So this whole situation to me is crazy. I don't understand why she would tweet something like that, but the way they moved so quickly to get rid of her makes me feel like it might be some type of humiliation ritual, but again, that's just me, honey, okay? So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation concerning Roseanne Barr going on this racist tirade and then basically losing it all in less than 24 hours. Do you agree with me about my conspiracy about how it was funny how for years after her show was off the air, she was a truther and she was talking about all this inside stuff in the industry and, you know, sprouting all these conspiracies. And then once they gave her her show back, it's like, fuck all these conspiracies. I'm back on television. You know, so the whole situation is insane but I would not be surprised if this was something that they were waiting for her to do so they can make an example out of her so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right Miss Kay. <laughs> hey you guys it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video if you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals definitely feel free to click my description box there's plenty of information in there please stay tuned for the next video talk to y'all later